Okay, there we go. All right, you guys see that okay? Yep. Okay, next slide, please. And then the next one. Perfect. Okay, so I wanted to get a few laughs out of the way. You've probably seen this one because it's been out for a little while. All right, next, Nathan. We get told that here a lot at Henderson. I never took it that way, but now I'm going to. All right, and next. I like that one because it's ironic, isn't it? That these guys are sitting at the edge of a helicopter looking like they could fall out any minute now and the, the lesson is safety first, so, or at least in the top five. All right, next, Nathan. And next. All right, so uh, by way of introduction, my name is Lauren Scott. Um, I am a CFI here at Desert Flying Club. I've been here about two years. I have my instrument and multi-engine rating. And um, I was trained at Purdue University uh, back in the 90s. I took a number of years off to focus on raising my family. And I actually returned to flying in 2018 when my one of my children my daughter, Anna, said, Mom, I think I want to learn how to fly. So I came out to Desert Flying Club and I got current and back up to speed. She was my first student. And then I've had a number of students since then. So I'm really enjoying that. Um, Fernando Molina is another member of our safety team. He is a CFI, uh, commercial, single and multi-engine rating uh, with instrument rating as well. He was a weapons systems officer or a backseater in the F-15Es. Retired in 2014, and he's currently a fighter flight test analyst at Ellis Air Force Base. He provides um, content for the Flying Instructional YouTube channel, Learn the Finer Points, which is really cool. I've watched some of those, Fernando. And he is also applying to become a local FAST team member. Um, another member of the safety team is Alan Zwick. He's an ATP, CFI, CFII, and MEI. Say that three times fast. Uh, he flew the KC-135, the T-37, T-38, and the U-2 for the U.S. Air Force from 1986 to 2000. He's currently a captain for Southwest based here in, LA, uh, in Las Vegas. He owned a Grumman Yankee and a Tiger. He joined DFC in July 2020, and he's looking forward to sharing his passion for general aviation with the other members here. And I really appreciate their help, by the way. They volunteered. These are all volunteer positions and they, I'm excited to see all the, um, the valuable insight and things that we come up with as a team and as a club to increase our safety. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the state of general aviation safety. So how many times have you ever heard it's safer to drive than it is, or I'm sorry, it's safer to fly than it is to drive? <laughs> Most of us have probably heard that at one time or another. Um, and commercial aviation and military aviation do boast a very high aviation safety rate. Uh, the record in 2018 was there was only one fatality in the United States in a commercial plane in 2018. And general aviation, while it is still very safe, clearly we have some improvements that we can still make. So non-commercial fixed wing aviation safety has been on the rise in recent years, which is great. But our, sadly, our accident rates are still much higher, much higher than commercial aviation. So according to the most complete Joseph T. Nall report for 2018, there were over 1,000 accidents, including 277 fatalities, which is just tragic. And we want to do everything that we can to make sure that we're operating safely ourselves. So Nathan, that's a link to an AOPA video. And let's see if that'll work. And you may have to go down here and unmute the video. To get um, safer, um, how do we know? The AOPA Air Safety Institute's annual NAW report. That's right, the NAW report has been the definitive report on general aviation safety for nearly three decades, looking at accident stats from every angle and showing where to strive for improvements. And now the NAW report is even more useful. We've done a lot of work behind the scenes to update the technology and modernize the way we release the report. 
So now the, null, the data behind the report will be available to people on a 30 day uh, rolling cycle. That's right, the safety data is now as current as it can be. Before, the null report actually covered data from two years earlier because of the time it takes the NTSB to process the stats. And the new online format makes it easy to find exactly what you wanna know for this year or going back years. And now, as we mentioned, the good news is that GA is safer than it's ever been. The latest data is kind of tracking what we've seen for the last several years. So we've seen a continued uh, reduction in terms of the accident rate uh, for the latest years that we have the full report. And that's good news. While there's been a slight uptick in the number of fatal accidents, the fatal accident rate continues to decline. That means that while people are flying more, the number of accidents per 100,000 hours flown is going down. Now, as you can see, the new null format shows the number of accidents up to about 30 days ago, but we can't calculate the accident rate until we get more data from the FAA and NTSB. So, Liz, I think that being able to get near real-time data will help the Air Safety Institute and other safety educators to see mm -hmm. problems developing and react more quickly than ever before. Yeah, that's right, Tom. And the interface is really simple and easy to use. I like being able to easily compare subcategories over multiple years. Now, sadly, one of the things we can see by doing that is that the majority of accidents are still due to pilot error. That's, that's you know, where the overwhelming cause lies. And that's the good and the bad. You know, the, uh, the bad is we'd like to see where we eliminate that part of our accidents. The good news is it still means we're flying very reliable equipment and the airplanes are holding up and it's, it's unusual for an airplane or a system to fail to cause a fatal accident. Well, unfortunately, one thing pilots keep doing is running out of gas. 56 accidents in 2018, and that's down a little from some years past. It just doesn't seem to be a reason for uh, running out of fuel. And I can tell you from the insurance standpoint, we've done doing a lot of work with uh, underwriters lately and trying to understand you know, where they're coming from. In their eyes, that's the unforgivable unfor sin. You run an airplane out of fuel and you're gonna find a really tough time to find insurance after that. Well, and Tom, as a flight instructor, I was glad to see that there really are few accidents when an instructor is on board. And, you know, I think it goes to show the safety culture that's ingrained into flight instructors and that flight instructors are teaching their students and also the level of professionalism that instructors operate at. Yeah, no, that is uh, very rewarding to see how safe it is uh, when you fly with an instructor and that students are being kept safe by their flight instructors and keeping them out of danger. Richard does have one bit of advice on how we all can become safer pilots. The thing we can do is go fly and be as proficient as possible in whatever platform you're flying. That's the key to safety. All right, thanks, Nathan. You can go to the next screen. So there's a number of things I feel like were pretty interesting about that short little video. and. They brought up some topics like fuel starvation, fuel exhaustion, um, pilot contributions. So we will be um, choosing some of these topics to focus on in future safety um, seminars. But tonight we just wanted to do more kind of an overview and give you some specific things that we're going to be implementing this year. Um, I just wanted to highlight this one because I, the NAL report is amazing. It breaks accidents and incidents down in so many different categories. It's really interesting to read through. but. These are a couple that just stood out to me that I thought you guys would enjoy seeing as well. So unfortunately, you can see the accident rate um, for those accidents in 2018 of the accidents, 675 accidents, 65.5% of the total are pilot related. And then of the fatal accidents, 54.3 are pilot related. And then mechanical, only 18% um, are contributing to the accident. And then only 6.7% are contributing to fatal accidents, which I thought was really interesting. So, you know, we, we operate um, in the pilot related, you know, maintenance can be an issue, but these numbers that are so high with the accidents and fatal accidents have to do with pilot related activities. So we have control over that. We have control over the type of training that we can do and the type of um, the type of seminars that we can offer and the recurrency that the pilots are choosing to participate in to help improve that rate. Okay, next screen. And then this is another slide that I thought was really interesting. So of 
the different types of flights that are being taken, uh, the personal flights are accounting for a vast majority of the number of accidents and fatal accidents and fatalities. And then instructional time looks like it's second place, but by far um, compared to the personal flights. And we're a flying club, right? So we take a lot of personal flights. So we are kind of in a high risk group and we wanna address some things that we can do to help strengthen our safety culture. Um, and Fernando, I'm gonna ask him to start uh, sharing now from the next slide. He's gonna talk about what safety culture means and then some specific ideas of things that we can implement. Fernando? Uh, all right, can you guys hear me now? I think I can unmute. All right, sweet, I, I see Laura, a thumbs up for Lauren. Uh, let's jump to the next slide. All right, so um, the big sp spots about the stuff that Lauren just shared is, is just a consideration that um, I, I think what we know is that good habit patterns and discipline flying more or less lead to uh, realistically safety-minded flying. So. We talked about it. We had a really good meeting uh, just initially earlier on uh, this month between Lauren, myself, and, and uh, Alan. Um, there's some great resources, a couple of the ones that hopefully we're going to push to you guys via this Facebook group and or uh, the page itself. Uh, AOPA is obviously an awesome one. You just saw the link from the Air Safety Institute on uh, how they're using the null, null report, which is a valuable article thing. But I don't expect everybody's just going to be pouring through the null report. So hopefully we'll just send you relevant information. Beyond that, um, we'll also hopefully, Alan will talk about the FAST uh, team and the WINGS um, safety aspects, but the fact that there's some great resources that we can just on a regular basis, just be sharing information and talking about stuff. And, and I hope, I, I'm sure between the three of our conversations, that, but amongst the rest of the CFIs as well, that if anybody has a question or you guys wanna talk about safety minded issues or things that you see or, or just a question about flying that, that you'll just reach out. Um, so here's some uh, quotes from the OPA article, safety, what is a safety culture? If you want a link to that, um, we can obviously provide it, or maybe we'll just post it after this on the Facebook page and we'll make it easy. But uh, just things like, you know, the things we repeatedly do, um, that's what defines us. Um, you know, you, ha you have some quick, quick quotes out there that um, practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice is what makes perfect, um, is a great uh, football quote. Um, and so it's just kind of one of the things that, that I think about in the culture I had flying in the, in the Air Force, uh, every and pilot intends to be safe, like accidents are accidents for a reason. So conscientious pilots hopefully will prevent the accident rates that we talked about earlier. And, and that's what we're hoping to do is build that culture in the, in the club. Um, so nobody asks for an accident, nobody plans on an accident. I think if we, um, if we work some type of regular thought process for thinking about accident prevention, then more than likely that that 1% to 3%, which are mechanical failures, ends up being one where if our safe habit patterns allow us to do um, you know, safe off, off airport landings, I think we all know that so long as you don't stall the airplane, that you can do a lot of things as far as airport off airport landings and general aviation airplanes are, uh, are relatively safe as far as surviving those type of things. So, so those are kind of things that we wanna think through and become a much better, safer uh, club. Um, so, and then the last quote, you know, if we act in a consistently safe manner, uh, we start creating an individual set of uh, good practices and then carry over into whatever other group we're part of, but, but uh, into, into our group flying. Uh, next slide. There you go. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I muted to take a drink of a, uh, you know, while I'm talking. So I'll, I'll try to stay on here. Uh, so culture of safety. So we talked, you know, the quotes kind of point to our culture of safety. Um, so for pilots and as a club, uh, our, our safety culture could be, you know, a set of shared altitudes, goals, practices every day, uh, existence towards increased safety in aviation. So I'm just reading the quote there. Um, and therefore, you know, what can a pilot do every day to instill a more safety conscious approach to our flying? And what that comes down to is really a daily approach to how we go through everything from thinking about the next flight, um, weather, airmanship, airworthiness, all that kind of stuff, 
to mitigate all the risk before you ever touch an airplane. And then, and then you're mitigating the risk via stuff like your pre-flight, via your uh, ground ops, via your run-up um, before you ever take off, off the runway. And then once you're up airborne, more than likely you've checked all your systems if you're doing it right. Um, but we have a culture as a club of thinking about and mitigating risks um, well before we ever take an airplane airborne. And that's kind of the, the hopes that we're gonna have here. Next slide. So developing a safety culture, um, some of the ideas we came up with with our first meeting at the beginning of the month. One is talk about it, talk about it early, talk about it often, uh, talk about it at monthly safety meetings, making sure that air, 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 not, ah, aeronautical decision-making, excuse me, and safety and risk management are in the initial, are on the ongoing training, they're on checkouts, they're a forefront to everything we do in, in the flying that we do in the planning for flying and the academics for flying is that ADM, risk management, that's the bottom line because it leads to everything else that we do. How do we approach our academics? How do we approach our, our um, knowledge tests? How do we approach prep, preparing for the uh, oral and the written um, you know, check rides that we're trying to do, let alone how do we approach every everyday flight? Um, so what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to offer a safety focus of the day, an emergency procedure of the day, um, in order to just have it in the front, forefront of people's minds, hopefully as part of your daily flights. And even if you're not flying that day, if you want to reference the emergency of the day or the focus uh, topic of the day, then feel free. And, and hopefully by doing those on a regular basis that you get a regular review of knowledge and a regular review of uh, risk management and decision making. Uh, we're going to encourage highlight reward participation through WINGS. Um, there are stats through the FAA safety team that uh, participation in wings and other recurrent knowledge um, improve safety a considerable amount. I don't have a statistical number, but we can pull it up later um, on, on how that works. But I can tell you as applying for FAA safety team here locally, that it's, that is fundamental to uh, what they do or what they consider to be a safety factor. Oh, by the way, from an insurance factor, and, oh, by, and if something happens like um, you know, a violation of some type or a consideration that a rule is not followed. Um, the FAA safety team considers a major factor of how much any pilot pursues continuing education like WINGS or like the ASI, ASI from uh, AOPA and those kind of things. If you have those things on your record, they're considered a strong point in your defense um, if for some reason you had a um, runway incursion or something, something minor. Well, that's actually major, but you know what I mean? If you have some type of, of uh, incident, um, they'll look at your record and see what kind of uh, pursuit of safety that you have on your, on your record. So uh, we're gonna try to pursue a safety bulletin board and we'll try to have that up and, and readily available, hopefully on the board as you enter the club. Uh, and we'll take a look at that and try to put some safety related notices as well as the uh, EP of the day and a topic of the day for you guys to review. Um, we're, I want you to consider that the safety team is here for remedial training. I think all the CFIs in the club are there as well, but uh, just consider the fact for sure you can reach out to the, either the three of us in the safety team and uh, consider that. You always have the chief CFI, Gary, so don't forget about that. And the board of directions, board of, excuse me, board of directors are also um, always available for any feedback. Um, we wanna have a clear way to report safety issues. So we're gonna make that more available. And so you can see the email below that uh, Lauren's created and all the three of us, as well as I believe Nathan, Lauren, head nod from you. Uh, who gets the safety team email? I believe it's the three of us plus Nathan. Is it the whole board or just three of us and Nathan? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it's actually just the three of you. Okay, so, so there you go. So yep. rest assured, if you report anything to safety at desertflyingclub.com, that the three of us are going to get it, and, and I promise you that um, that we're going to respond in some way, shape, or form, either visibly for the entire club, or we'll uh, we'll make it some way visible for um, you know on the bulletin board, or or maybe via the next safety briefing. And next slide. All right, so we talked about uh, daily safety focuses. So two things we created as a safety uh, thing we did that this month is an EP of the day, an, an emergency procedure of some type, and a safety topic of the day. So if you think about this, like for you guys that are working on your private or any other rating, as well as anybody who's just this line, private, commercial, whatever rating you have, and you wanna have some topic to discuss, do it, be it hangar talk, be it uh, part of your daily safety brief, 
whatever, what we wanted to do is kind of throw some topics out there that we could all, it, it would do us all good to take a look at on a regular basis. So here's an example. We'll have the entire thing for the entire month, but this is you know what fits on the slide. So EPs of the day, so that day of the month, you can use whatever it is. And then that day, just make it the, your, you know, an initial topic. It doesn't mean to be long. Um, just, just consider, you know, how would you handle the situation today? And if it's something you haven't talked about in a while, it might be worth actually pulling out the POH and actually taking a look at it. Uh, let's look at the next slide for the topic. So I have a question for you, Fernando, sure. as you're going over this, maybe, yeah, maybe we'll make this a little interactive. So if yeah. I'm a, just a member, I'm not going up with the CFI, how, how can I use this? Yeah, same. So if you're up with the CFI and this is a student sorting, I was going to, there's a slide in a couple, so we'll probably cover what's on it, but okay. um, it is, is that um, the way to use these slides, go back real quick um, so you can look at the topic and you can see that there's a list of topics. There's 31 days. Obviously we won't always hit them. We hit, I, I purposely made day number 31, one of those topics. that's not something you have to cover every month, um, every other month or so. And you might miss it on leap year, obviously, but but these are just topics to just, just if, you, if you have nothing to do, if your instructor doesn't have dedicated things to review for that day, then these are things that, that every day private pilot rated, instrument pilot rated, anybody rated could stand to take a look at, at any one of these topics. And then if you, you go back one again, um, if you review the 31 EPs on a regular basis, then I think it, I think it would help us all just have a mindset that we're prepared for what hopefully is the inevitable, um, not the inevitable, excuse me, that's not the way to put it. Um, hopefully what we're gonna avoid, but we're prepared if, if the unfortunate happens is a better way for me to say that. Um, so that's the, the point of the EP a day. It doesn't hurt you. It doesn't need to be more than two minutes if you want it to. And if it's something that you haven't done in a long time, then it warrants maybe pulling out the POH for that airplane. Remember each airplane has different procedures for these uh, emergencies as well as the topics. And, uh, and it may be warrant actually getting into the charts. They're getting into the, the, the uh, expanded emergency procedures based on the section of that airplane. You know, Piper and, and Cessna obviously have different sections of their emergency procedures and you wanna consider those things. If you go next to the topic, then you can look at just things that all of us could consider. Um, you know, stuff like spatial dis disorientation. Just talk about, you know, what would you do? How would you get on the instruments? Um, you know, day six is 180 degree turn after entry into IMC. That sounds cool, but how many people have actually practiced it? And if you haven't practiced it, then reciting it once a month and saying, you know, I would do this, get on the round dials, um, you know, stay on that, trust my instruments over any vestibular uh, considerations and actually execute that 180 turn as soon as I recognize I'm an IMC. Worse yet, how would that look like at night? You know, those are the kind of things that just, just real quick talk about. If you're not sure how to discuss one of these things, then let us know and maybe we can, uh, in fact, my intention for the topics of the day is to provide some uh, references later on, uh, right out of the AIM or right out of the, uh, air, air, uh, the airplane flying handbook or the uh, PHAC to, to give you a place to look it up. And if you wanna do it the day before a flight or the day of a flight, then, then that, those would be great ways to just, just consider these things to, to, to take a look at. There's, there's no way we're gonna direct them but, uh, but hopefully it'll help out if you want there. If you're not flying and you just want something to look up on, on day 10 and you're bored, then uh, maybe look these up and, and see if you're like, hey, I want a topic of the day. Um, so there's a lot of different ways you can do this. We just threw topics out there. If you have suggestions for topics you wanna see, then uh, you know, those are all things that we can change. And let's go ahead and go to the next one. Um, and this pretty much summarizes all this stuff, uh, Nathan, to answer your question. I think that answers your question and if you had any other questions besides that. No, that's perfect. So what I understand is if I'm just a pilot going up, you know, and flying around, you know, taking a family, just maybe make it, you know, maybe the engine failure after takeoff is on there and just, I would take a look at, okay, what am I going to do on this flight if my engine fails on takeoff, just be pay attention to the roads in the area and, and plan for that. Sure. You know, that's, that's flight, you know, it's just, just to have it aware at that moment that that's what I'm looking for. That's one great way to do it. Um, mission specific to the flight you're doing that day is great. Um, obviously, we would hope that you're gonna hit the um, special interest items of the day that you're doing on that flight. If you're doing a cross country to Palm Springs versus uh, here to Lake Havasu, those are two di very different cross countries or, or into other Southern California. 
let alone do you have survival equipment in the airplane? Are you flying, like you said, Nathan, with family? Um, or is it just going to be a solo cross country um, type of thing? You know, those are all different things to consider, but, but the topics of the day are hopefully something to just help you, um, you know, for that day. Um, obviously, switch what you want. There's no way we're going to make it mandatory, but, but there are things that you can just, if, if devoid of something to think about, spend a couple of minutes, um, either talk through it. If not, it would be great to look it up on the PHAC or the Airplane Flying Handbook um, or the AIM or wherever the good references are. Um, or if you want, like I said, before your flight, if it's a couple of days from now, then uh, consider asking one of the CFIs or one of the safety members and we'll, we'll provide some references to, to take a look at. Perfect. So that's kind of how to use them. We already talked through them as I was going through the slides and this is showing it. Remember AOPA, if you want to look up those topics, almost every one of those topics has a reference at AOPA or FAAsafety.gov. Um, you can look up and there's probably a set of academics. If you don't have a, 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 my recommendation to all club members, if you don't have a login already to those two sites, I would highly recommend you do. If nothing else, because you can get uh, FAA wing credit that Alan's about to talk to you um, for either one, um, just by going on there and going, hey, this academics looks, looks really you know, relevant to me. A ASI, Aviation Safety Institute, that's run by AOPA, and then obviously a a FAAsafety.gov are both, they have lots of different types of academics that if one just interests you, you can take it, log in, either get the credit because you took the test, or if you apply and reference it to one of the CFIs in the club, then we can sign it off for you. And so that kind of covers that. Any questions on any of this stuff? And then I'm going to hand it off to Alan. All right, Alan will cover us on uh, taking a look at where those references come from. Yeah, the next slide. There we go. Yeah, can you all hear me now? We can. Okay, great. All right, so I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about the, uh, the WANES program that's part of the uh, FAA safety uh, program. And this all started about 10 years ago. Um, you can see I threw up, there was a, a circular that came out uh, back in uh, February of 2011. And this kind of, um, you know, rolled in with a change in philosophy with the FAA, where uh, they kind of went from enforcement and using uh, fear and threats to get people to uh, comply and be safer pilots. Did they start to realize that, you know, most of us want to do the right thing and we're trying to, um, but it's just that we made not an honest mistake or we didn't have the information we needed or we're not as proficient as we should be. And so they set about how can they do that better? And so one of the outgrowths of that was the, the wings program. And the you know ultimate goal was to uh, reduce uh, general aviation accidents, uh, provide us educational opportunities and uh, uh, assist us in learning how to use and uh, apply uh, some risk management tools to our everyday flying. And part of that was more of a change to scenario-based training as opposed to just doing a bunch of unrelated maneuvers. Um, now, as instructors, we try to set it up in a scenario so it's kind of a real world situation um, and allow you to apply your skills that way so that you can actually see why do I need to know how to recover from a stall? Not just that it's some maneuver that I have to do so that uh, I can pass my check ride and get my rating, um, but we're actually building some skills here that uh, hopefully will keep you safe and uh, uh, be a better pilot. And then also through this, they decided that, you know, proficiency is key. So there's some tools there to uh, try to keep you going uh, all the time. And for those of you that only fly part-time, uh, you know, it's just a hobby and, and it's not supposed to take up your whole life. Um, but those of us that do it for a living, I mean, we spend a lot of time training. Uh, when in the Air Force, that was pretty much our whole mission when we weren't out. Um, you know, hunting down the bad guys was we were at home and we were preparing to go do that. 
And so we always had training objectives and things to do. As a commercial pilot, I've got quarterly online training that I have to do. I have my annual recurrent training that I do um, in the simulator. Uh, so, you know, that's always in the forefront of our minds. So what we're trying to do is help get the general aviation pilots to be the same way. And that was part of what Fernando was talking about with the topics that we now have for you to kind of give you some guidance on, you know, hey, what should I be thinking about before I step to the airplane today? And also we found that, you know, pilots who are more proficient, um, they're more confident and you have a better time when you're out there if you know what you're doing. Uh, so hopefully that's our ultimate goal is to go out and have a good time enjoying uh, the, the hobby that we've all signed up for. Uh, and so the way the program works is uh, We'll show you here in a little bit how you can log on to the uh, FAA safety website and get an account set up, but you're going to have uh, flights to fly with a CFI. And once again, instead of just waiting until you've, uh, it's been 23 months since the last time you flew with the CFI and now it's time for your biannual flight review to go out and do it, it's probably better to kind of whittle away at those uh, training requirements and stay proficient by going out more often with an instructor. And so they will give us some guidance on maybe maneuvers we'd want to consider based on your experience and, and the ratings that you have. The other thing is uh, attend a safety seminar, like what we're doing tonight. And uh, there's also other stuff that the Air Safety Institute puts on and the FAA. And, and once you get signed up, you'll start getting emails about these classes and webinars and uh, seminars that you can go to and you can get credit for that. And uh, so that kind of rolled into my third bullet there. And then the final is, is if you complete uh, one phase of wings, that will count as your biannual flight review. So you'll get credit for that. It'll reset your clock and then you'll start working on the next phase of wings. So right, if we can go to the next slide, please. So how to participate, uh, we'll go to the uh, FAA safety homepage and uh, you'll create an account, you'll have your profile and, uh, and you'll set your preferences there and then that'll establish a wings profile for you. And you can see the picture I have there is of a, a publication you can download from their safety website that talks about the wings program and kind of steps you through this whole process. That we'll show you some of the screenshots of the web page that you'll need to go to. So if we can go to the next uh, slide, we'll see this is the uh, FAA uh, safety homepage. And if you can see up in the right hand corner is where you're going to initially log in. If you haven't already established an account, you'll need to uh, go there and uh, click on the link at the bottom of that upper right hand. Uh, Part of the web page and then um, you can get an account set up with your email and then if you log in to things like uh, the safety meeting today and, and others um, it becomes kind of an automated process as far as getting credit for your uh, wings seminars that you go to um, so then you'll go to the next slide here and this will be where you find um, your preferences and your profile and so this is what that right uh, part of the home page looks at once you get logged in. It'll have your email address up there, and then you'll click right under that for your preferences and profile. Also, too, if you'll look kind of the second row in red there, the second block over to the right um, is wings, and you can click on the link there to pull up different parts of the wings program, and that's where you can um, download the um, you know, Wings Handbook that I was talking about. Um, and if we go to the next slide, you'll see when you click on your Wings profile, the page that'll come up. And then this is where you can, oops, we lost the screen share in there. Okay, now we're back. Um, but you can see how you've got account preferences and then you've got your wings profile. And this is where you'll go in and, and select 
based on your ratings, uh, what you're interested in. And, uh, and then that will determine the course content for your wings completion. And then you can also um, click on the my wings part on that page. And if we go to the next slide, you'll see how then it comes up with the different courses that I'm going to need to complete in order to complete that phase of wings. Um, and I already have one completed there out of my knowledge activities, the fourth one, and that was a uh, AOPA um, Air Safety Institute webinar that I watched last week. And so I just signed up for that. And when it came on, watched it. And, uh, and at the end, then I got an email back saying, congratulations, you've completed one of your knowledge credits. And I went and logged into here. And sure enough, it had already updated. And it gave me credit for that. Something else you'll notice is under the flight activities, you can, on the right-hand side there, if you don't like what they came up with, for you to, to do, you can go, hey, show me some alternatives. And if you click on that, it'll bring up other syllabi that you can look at um, for training ideas to go out and, and do with an, a CFI. And if you go to the next uh, slide, you'll see what your wings checklist looks like. And there across the top, you'll choose your category. And you can see this is just kind of another way of them presenting the different um, knowledge and flight uh, activities that you'll need to do. And they give a little more description as to the courses, but you can just uh, um, see those get checked off as you accomplish those, those items. Uh, and then if we go to the next slide, you'll see this is an example of one of the um, flight syllabuses that's out there. And it you'll sit down with your instructor and talk to them about that you're wanting to complete this um, part of the wings program and, and they'll go over these maneuvers with you and then you'll go out and get to practice them in the airplane. And that's how you'll get credit then for the flight portion. So when you've done your knowledge portion, your flight portion, then that's when you'll get credit for um, completing a phase of the wings program, which then will uh, count as your flight review for that two years. So if we go to the next slide, so bottom line, um, you know, what's, what's in it for me? Well, probably the, the most important thing is that first one, becoming a more confident and proficient pilot. That's our goal. Uh, that's the FAA's safety goal. Um, and definitely as, as Lauren and Fernando talked about, that's what we as the safety committee are trying to help you do here um, at Desert Flying Club. The next is that you'll get credit uh, for flight review. Uh, and then you'll also probably enjoy your flying more. Your passengers, they'll be impressed with uh, all the new uh, skills that you have from being a more proficient pilot. And then also as an added bonus, uh, we're throwing out there as a club to try to encourage you to do these wings activities. We're gonna raise the bar a little bit and uh, we'd like to see you do one wing activity uh, every month. And so members that accomplish that, at the end of the year, you will be put in a drawing for some cool prizes that are yet to be determined. Um, but you'll go in a drawing for those um, and we plan on doing that on an annual basis. So that's pretty much uh, everything I know about the WINGS program. So if you, anybody have any questions or comments on that? And if you guys have any questions, you can put them uh, in the chat program or the chat screen there. So one second. And also, if you don't think of it tonight, that's uh, we have the email address that you can type them up and, and send them to, you know, Lauren Fernando and myself, and we'll be more than happy to get back to you on any questions or comments you have. So if nobody else has anything, then uh, that's all I have on the wings. 
Hey, so um, this is Fernando jumping on here. Um, let's see. Oh, it looks like Jan is talking about having, having done multiple wings. Um, you know, Alan laid out all how do the wings goes and how the phase, how completing a phase goes. Um, a couple of important things. Um, as I've done the training to hopefully be a fast team member, uh, I think I'm waiting on Nostravia hopefully to, to get that going. But um, some important things to notice is you can always get wings credit uh, for different things that are on there. ASI, the, tonight's meeting, for instance, and that kind of stuff. Realize it may not give you credit towards that phase completion. So uh, what, what Alan laid out, a phase completion is awesome because it's, it's a dedicated effort towards actually completing the requirements for your flight review. Um, I think uh, we probably need to get through with the board of directors to make sure, um, you know, there's probably, I would guess for our insurance, a differentiation between the club rules for completing an annual flight review and, and whether or not wings credit completes that versus the FAA requirement to get wings. So let's, let's be mindful of that. Um, and then we'll, we'll probably table with Nathan on, on making sure that we're, we're clear on, on not um, getting credit where, where it's not due. Um, but regardless of how the club by, bylaws will be met, um, we probably shouldn't um, discount the fact that, that you're statistically a better pilot if you're, if you're being mindful of safety on a regular basis, like Alan laid out. Um, so those are a couple things to think about. Um, other things that I recognize as I was looking at uh, the uh, FAA safety team training is that um, those flight parts, um, as Alan laid out, there there you can get alternative type things. For instance, on mine, it, it because uh, one of the last ratings before CFI was my multi-engine. It's pointing out for me doing multi-engine uh, training work. I'm probably realistically not going to do that, so I'll go there and I'll look for alternative types of flying either to commercial standards or to, uh, or even private standards, it doesn't matter. There are different ways to get your credit for your wings. So um, don't let that discount the fact that um, from all the st statistics and all of the research that I've done personally, um, the FAA absolutely gives you credit. If for some reason there's a uh, off airport landing or a, um, you know, accidentally violated the Bravo or accidentally did something um, that if they see that you pursue or you're attempting at compliance um, from everything I've seen, a lot of articles I've read, they absolutely give you credit for that versus the opposite version, which is they, uh, you know, they go after your certificates. Um, yeah, those are, those are big pictures I just wanted to add to you guys, realizing that, that there's lots of great wings training. Don't let it shortchange you if you're not completing a phase uh, completion credit um, because there's great academics out there. And uh, that's all I got. All right, thank you, you guys. Can you hear me okay? Okay, um, thank you so much for that overview. And I know, so I really love the WINGS program and I promote it to all of my students and I actually give at least three flight credits per student, like private pilot student that's coming through with me. There's actually a benefit for CFIs as well. So if we sign off at least 15 flight activities in that 24 month period, we can renew our CFI certificate, which is really cool. Um, so I'm in the habit of, you know, trying to encourage people to be a part of it, but I, I get something back from it as well as the CFI, which is great. Um, I also wanted to add that student pilots can participate in the WINGS program. I did reach out to the national FAST team to check on that. You can't actually achieve phases or those levels of achievement until you are a certified pilot, like a private pilot or higher, but the students can be working toward it. And then their check ride can count, if I understand it correctly, as their last flight to achieve that level. So they're welcome to add their deep, ask their DPE if he's willing to give them wings credit. I'm sure he will be because they cover a lot of those required um, flight activities in the check ride. Um, okay, Nathan, could you go to the next slide? Is there another one? There is, there you go. Oh, there we go, okay. So um, these are some of the safety seminar topic ideas. We don't have the entire year of 2021 planned out yet. We do have a couple coming up that we are planning on, um, but we are open to hearing from suggestions from all of you. So please let us know if you have some specific topic that you're really interested in hearing more about. Um, and if you're interested in being a presenter as well, we're gonna be looking for a variety of presenters this year at the safety 
seminars, or if you'd like to contribute about something that you've learned or some experience that you've had, we'd be happy to have you share that. Um, I think, you know, I'd much rather learn from each other's mistakes than have to make our, make the same mistakes ourselves in order to learn the lessons. So even if it's something that you want to share that, you know, we actually started out our safety meeting as a safety team earlier this month. And I said, what have you learned about safety from a mistake that you've made? And we went around sharing because everybody makes mistakes. So I think sometimes that can be the most valuable lesson um, if we can share those things with each other. So anyway, these are some of the things we have talked about next month. I believe we're going to do aeronautical decision making. And then in March, I think we're going to do weather, weather briefings and making good weather decisions. Um, but again, our email is right there on the bottom of the screen. If you have any ideas or comments or suggestions, we'd love to hear from you. And other than that, that is all the material that I believe we had for tonight. Well, thanks, Lauren. Really appreciate it very much. And uh, also thank you, Fernando and Alan. Um, it's great to have a excellent safety committee at Desert Flying Club. And, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, one of our, our focuses on the club is, is making us safer pilots. And uh, really appreciate the safety team coming in here and, and presenting this information um, for us and just a reminder and um, I definitely will participate in these in these safety topics and and the wings program is a is a great program. So um, again, thank you uh, for joining us tonight um, at Desert Flying Club, our, our first safety meeting for 2021. Just a reminder for those that came in late, um, we do have um, the uh, we'll call it our our virtual hangar meeting next Friday night. Um, and we'll be sending out the link uh, for that. Um, we did uh, take uh, down attendance tonight, so we will get that over to the uh, FAA safety team uh, to get you some WINGS credits for this. I think it counts as one uh, basic knowledge credit for joining us tonight, which is, which is excellent, uh, well on the way. And um, again, I very much appreciate it. Thanks for being part of this tonight. And if anybody's interested, that's uh, you know that we have quite a few that are here that might not be members of the Flying Club, uh, feel free to um, reach out to us through our website, or you can email me, Nathan at DesertFlying.club, or um, our club administrator, Joanna at admin at DesertFlying.club. So we're always here to answer any questions about the club um, and just aviation in general. So. Again, thank you everybody for joining us. And um, uh, just actually before I end, I did a couple of questions that came up in the chat here. Um, if you are a non-member and uh, you came tonight, you will still get credit. Um, so this went out to everybody uh, that's registered in the Las Vegas area for the um, WINGS program. So you will get credit and um, we'll make sure that we get that registered. So. Um, if you didn't sign up with the same email address that's on the um, FAA safety page, um, we, that might be a difficulty. So make sure if you register to this uh, webinar or seminar without with a different email address that's on the FAA site, um, please send us an email and just let us know that that's the case. So I, I use a different email personally for the FAA safety.gov website than I do for Desert Flying Club. So that's a little different for me. Um, so if anybody um, has that situation, just let us know. So again, um, if you guys are interested in joining the club, uh, please uh, reach out to us directly. And um, I will leave this meeting open and allow everybody to unmute if you guys want to hang out for a little bit. And, um, and you guys can, uh, let's see, that should allow you to unmute yourself. If anybody has any questions or things and want to hang out um, here, uh, feel free to hang out for a little bit. <laughs>